Hey guys, in this tutorial we are going to create a secure login system with PHP and MySQL. Now in front of me I have a basic register form with an email field, a username, a password and a confirm password field. And of course a submit button. Under the submit button I have a link to send the user to the login page if the user has already an account. In the login page I have a username and a password field. Also, I have a link to send the user back to the register page. And if the user don't remembers his password, I have a link to send him to the password reset page. Now here the user can enter his email address and we send him a new password to log in. Also, I have a link to go back to the login page and from there back to the register page. Now there is another page and it is the user's account page. When the user logs in successfully, he will be redirected here. In this page, the user has the option to log out or delete his account. Now let's go back to the register form. If I click on the submit button, nothing is going to happen because here we have only the HTML and CSS code. And as we will say as developers, we have here the front end of our application. So let's go to the editor and code with PHP the back end to make our application to work. As you can see in our projects folder we have a bunch of files that we need to make our application to work. I'm not going to go through the files right now. We are going to see every file when the time comes to deal with it. Now in front of me I have the index file. This is the starting page and contains the register form. I will also not explain the structure and the CSS code of any HTML form. We are going to focus on the things that matters. So let's begin. Now as I said this is the register form. Let's take a look at the form's attributes. The action attribute is empty. This means that the form will submit the data to the same page. The method attribute is set to post. This means that we are going to use the super global post variable to catch the data in the PHP code. Inside the form we have the emails input field, the name attribute is set to email, here is the username field, the name attribute is set to username, the password with a name of password, normally we will have set the type attribute to password, but it's better for the tutorial to see what we are typing in. Next we have the confirm password field and the submit button. In the PHP code we are going to use the name attribute to check if the form is submitted. And last we have the link to the logging page. Now we have to write the code to register the user in the database. But before we do that let's see a file that we have in our projects folder. There is a config.php file in which we define our database connection details and we start a session every time the file runs. Also we have to take a look at the database users table. The users table is where we register our users. The table has a user ID, a username, a password and an email column. Now we have another file in our root folder and that is the functions.php file. In here we are going to write all the functions we need to make our logging system to work. Let's see them. The first thing that we have to do is to require the config.php file, which will give us access to our database connection details. The first function that we see is the connect function. The connect function will connect PHP and MySQL. The next function is the register user function. We are going to use this function to register the user in the database. Next we have the login user function to log the user in. We have a logout user function to log out the user. The next function is the password reset function. We are going to use this function to reset the password in the database and send it to the user with an email. And last we have the delete account function to give the user the option to delete his account. Now let's start writing our functions and we are going to begin with a connect function. But before I start I have to say that I will not go through and explain how every PHP function that I'm going to use works. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how the logic works behind a secure logging system. If I take the time to explain every PHP function it will take me hours to complete this tutorial. And with that said, let's start. 
The first thing that we do inside the connect function is to create a new MySQLi object and connect the PHP language to the MySQL server. We are using the constants from the config file as arguments and we save the returned object in the MySQLi variable. Next, I'm going to use an if statement to check if the connection is successful. I will check the connect error number property and if the returned value is not zero, I will log the error in a file. It is a big security risk to show database errors to the user. That's why we are going to write the connection error in the dblog.txt file that we have in our projects folder. Now inside the if statement and if there is an error, I will store the return connection error to the error variable. Next, I will get the current date and I will store it to the error date variable. Next, I will combine the error and the error date to a string and store it in the message variable. Now I will use the file put contents function and I will write the error message to our log file. And last, I will return false. Else, I will return the MySQLi object. Now that we have our database connection set up, let's move to the register user function. The register user function takes four arguments. And those are the user's email, the user's username, the password, and the confirm password value. Now the first thing that I will do inside the function is to connect to the database. I'm going to need the MySQLi object to query the database several times. Next, I'm going to grab all the function's arguments and I will store them in the args variable. The args variable is now an array holding the user's input values. Now we are going to validate those values to be as secure as we can. Our first action is to trim any white space from the beginning and the end of any value. For this action, I will use the array map function to go through all the arguments and trim any white space. The array map function returns an array which contains the trimmed values. We are going to store those values back to the args array. Next, I will loop again through the args array. And if I find any empty value, I will return an error that all fields are required. Next, I will loop one more time through the args array and search for any opening and closing tags. I'm doing this because I don't want any harmful JavaScript code in my database. Next, I'm going to check if the incoming email has the proper structure. I will use the filter var function and if the email is not valid, I will return an error. Next, I will check if the email already exists in the database. I'm going to use MySQL prepared statements to avoid any SQL injection that could harm our database. I'm not going to go through prepared statements. I have a video on this topic to watch if you feel like learning them. Now back to our code block here, and in short, I search in the users table if the given email already exists. If this is the case, I will return an error and I will stop the function here. Next, I will check the username's length and if it is greater than 50 characters, I will return an error. Next, I'm gonna search the users table again and I will check if the username is already taken. I want every user to have a unique username. I will use again a prepared statement and if the username exists in the users table, I will return an error. Next, I'm going to check the password's length and if it is greater than 50 characters, I will return an error. Next, I will check if the password and the confirmed password are not matching. If the condition returns true, again I will return an error. Next, I will use the password hash function to encrypt the password and store it in the hashed password variable. And last, I will use again a prepared statement to insert the user in the database. If everything goes well, I will return the string success, else I will return an error. And we are done with the register function. Now let's go back to the register form and complete the register action. So let's go back to the index file and scroll to the top. I will open PHP tags at the top of the page to write the PHP code. 
Now inside the PHP tags, I will require the functions.php file so we have access to the register user function. Next, I'm going to check if the submit button is pressed. Next, I'm going to use the register user function and I will pass in the submitted email, the username, the password and the confirm password value. But we have to catch whatever the function will return in a variable. We are going to use the response variable to display the function's returned message. And we are going to do this at the bottom of the form. In this code block, we are saying that if the function returns the string success, we will show the user a success message. Else, we are showing whatever error has occurred. Now, a last thing that I have to do is to make the form sticky. This means that I'm going to set every input field value to the submitted value. I'm going to set the emails value to the submitted email. I'm going to do the same thing with the username, the password and the confirm password field. The at sign in front of every variable tells the browser, tells the server not to throw a, war a warning if the variable is not set. Now we won't lose the values that we are typing in the fields when we submit the form. I don't think I have anything else to do in the index file, so let's test out what we have done. Let's bring the register form in the screen and let's register a user by making some mistakes. I'm going to write my email but without the at sign. My username is George. I will set the most secure password. I'm kidding. I will leave the confirm password field empty and I will press the submit button. We get the error that all fields are required. Let's confirm the password and press again the submit button. Now we get the error that the email is not valid. Let's fix the email and change the confirm password. And press again the submit button. And we get the error that the passwords don't match. Let's fix the confirm password and register the user. And we get the success message. But let's take a look also at the database. And there is the user, the hash password and his email. Everything works fine. And in this point we reach the end of the first video on how to build a secure login system. In the next video we are going to log in and log out the user. If you like the video and don't want to miss the second part, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.